19 drivers have already qualified to be in the NASCAR Sprint All-Star Race. They'll be joined by three more from the Sprint Showdown, but those 19 are ready to qualify with this unique format. It's three laps total, including a four-tire pit stop. And there are penalties. Pinning outside the box, your time's disallowed. Loose lug nuts and other penalties, five seconds each added to your total time for the three laps. And we are underway with Casey Kane, the Farmers Insurance Chevrolet from Hendrick Motorsports. Our first qualifier. Okay, so they're going to come off a track and race. I mean, just as fast as they can come off a racetrack. So what what do you think we'll see here, Larry? You think they'll run out in the grass trying to get on pit road? You think they'll slide through their pit boxes, or do you think it'll just be like routine? I think we will have one or two drivers that that get in trouble on this deal, whether it's completely missing the entrance to pit road, getting in the grass, or sliding too far through their pit box. I think stopping's going to be the big thing because you come down through there with all that speed, man. You got to anticipate that stop. All right, no speed limit coming on to pit road. Kane takes a wide look here as he comes to complete. How are you going to pit next time? The first you to pit this time. Yeah, NASCAR doesn't tell the teams which lap they have to pit on, but you're going to do it at the completion of lap two. Why? Well, because you want advantage of everything cool and those four fresh tires making that first full lap, leaving pit road hard. All right, here we go, boys. Hang on to your helmets. Right through the middle of the track, down onto the pit road. Whoa! It's fast. Oh, my gosh. There's no way he can get that thing woed up. Is there? Hard Is on there? the brakes. He did it! with time to spare. Kenny Francis' team over the wall and hard at work. Matt? And Mike, we're going to see a lot of conventional and unconventional things take place during the stops. You're going to see right now some guys, like the five guys, they went over the wall, went to the right side first. You're going to see some guys coming up that start out on the left side. They saw 15-1 on the stop. It's going to be a little slow because they can't go over the wall until the car actually stops. That was, I, I tell you, I, because I haven't seen it at speed, him yeah. coming down pit road, I thought, no, there's no way, but he rode her up beautifully. And his exit speed at the end of pit road, 106 miles an hour. I think last year we saw a couple of cars at 110. The big difference at the entrance of pit road, 151 miles an hour. That was a penalty free run for Casey Kane. And we're awaiting the timing and we'll show you how we'll keep track of the 19 cars as they qualify. Now, no pit crew competition. NASCAR did not conduct that competition this year as they have in the past. So the qualifying order is also the order in which you pick your pit stalls for the All-Star Race. I was pretty impressed with him. Casey coming off the track and getting his woed up. Let's see how these other guys fare. That's a great, uh, great start. One minute, 54.032 for Casey Kane. And there's his first lap. There is the time from turn three to pit entry, his entry speed, the time the car was stopped in the pit, and the pit road exit speed, and the total time. Yeah, 28-12, great lap. I mean, that's, that's fast. And here's Kurt Busch in the furniture row, Sealy Chevrolet. You saw crew chief Todd Barrier. Ten all-star appearances for Kurt. Started first in 2010 when qualifying was rained out. He went on to win it. That was by my stopwatch. That was a very fast first lap for Kurt Busch. Well, this car is unofficial. This car has been fast. They've been testing the places fast. Fast last week in Darlington, new track record. They've got this thing tuned up and it is fast. And we saw Kurt in practice come on pit road at 150 miles an hour. Wow, he just slammed it down to the down to the track apron. Unbelievable. 157 into his pit box. Matt. 
and the official raised his hand. That meant that the crew members could jump over the wall. Mike Houston, tiny, former professional wrestler. He's the carrier on the front, but he's also the pit crew coach. He came on board. You saw what these guys did back at Richmond, nearly winning the race because of their stops on pit road, 14-7. Great stop. I tell you, these guys are on it. Kurt is doing a whale of a job. The car is fast, and that was a great pit stop. And that car came off the track and onto the apron so <laughs> violently, Daryl. I can't believe it didn't spin out. I, I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked, I tell you. And, Daryl, what they did, you saw a crew member reach over and pull a piece of tape off that nose. They had the tape on there to take full advantage of it, getting a little warm so they yanked some off for this final lap. Kyle Bush was the pole sitter last year. Five. Almost six seconds slower than what we've seen thus far. And Curtis quickest at 152.44. That's a minute, 52.44 seconds. And in all but exit speed, he ranks first of two. Well, so far, I mean, we got a long way to go in qualifying, but these first two guys have impressed the heck out of me with getting on pit road, their pit stop. I love this. Mark Martin will be our third qualifier. Here's Steve Burns. Casey Kane and his crew chief, Kenny Francis, have just reviewed the effort. Uh, what did you guys think, and how, how difficult was that to get that big thing slowed down? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was just a really different deal. Kind of lead the way, and, uh, you know, I didn't, I don't know. I, I think there's a lot of places you can gain a lot, you can lose a lot. The, the track time, the lap time, I don't think that's near as important as getting to your stall and then leaving your stall. Um, so I felt like I could probably give up a lot there, but uh, it was still, Felt all right and uh, definitely a lot different than what we're used to. Look forward to tomorrow night's race. It's going to be a lot of fun with our Farmers Insurance Chevrolet. The guys have, have done a great job. The car felt really good in, in practice today. Thank you, Casey. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Mark Martin's making his 24th All-Star appearance, all consecutive, and that's the most of all drivers. He's in the Aaron's Dream Machine Toyota for Michael Walter Bracing and Crew Chief Rodney Childers. He's going to arc that thing way up the hill. Late entry. And here he Fast. Comes. And he's carrying a lot of speed at the midpoint of pit road. It was 157, which was the same as Kurt Busch, Matt. And remember, we talked about how you might see some conventional stops here. Exactly what Greg Miller and the guys at MWR are doing here. Saving time, already getting the left side of the car because you have to wait on the wall. Right side, and he's away. That was different. Very different. That was very different. Well, I like that because you have to wait until the car comes to a stop. So I wonder, is there an advantage left or right? Well, we'll find out. But yep. one thing that hurt him is Mark didn't, he stopped shallow in the pit box and it made him have to run back toward the car. That hurt their time. He also was the first driver that didn't get beyond 100 miles per hour on his exit speed, only 97. So Mark Martin brings the 55 around for the final time. Turn your fan on. There's a lot of them in that chick cool right now. He is second. Two right now. One minute. Seven. 54 flat. Fastest pit road entry speed with that arcing entry tied for the fastest pit stop. A little and, slow on exit. Yep. And here's Steve. 78 teams, still the quickest, 152.44, the elapsed time. Kurt Busch, uh, pretty different from what you guys usually do. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, you know, to have NASCAR open up the ability to come on the pit road like old school days of just all the speed you want to carry, it puts you, puts you back a little bit in, in the, a few decades ago on how dangerous it really is, but how the fun factor really kicks up. It was awesome. Driving it down in there, um, a little bit tight when I was trying to transition across the banking onto pit road. But I think we executed well. Our furniture row guys were solid on their stop. I think uh, we did everything in all the categories about 95%. We'll get beaten in some areas, but maybe we'll get them all on the average. Good luck. Thank you. Hey, get this. Kurt Busch went from 120 miles an hour to zero in 700 feet. Uh, it's amazing how fast they're coming down. The first time I saw Casey, that's when I said, there's no way. But everybody's carrying that speed and they're stopping perfectly. Uh, they're executing better, I think, with this format than they did under the old format. Five-time Sprint Cup champ Jimmy Johnson in the Lowe's Patriotic Chevrolet. The Hendrick Motorsports team led by crew chief Chad Knauss. 11 All-Star appearances for Johnson. 
only repeat winner in the last 14 All-Star races. Started in 2009 from the pole. See Chad Knauss there, the crew chief. He somewhat is the one that made the suggestion back in 2009 about running this patriotic paint scheme. I'd kind of like to know who came up with the idea about this wide open pit road speed. Because uh, quite honestly, I think it really adds a, an excitement level to the qualifying that we haven't, we haven't seen in years. And I like, Daryl, that it seems to have taken away a preference for one pit box over the other. Yeah, there'd always been that argument that there was an advantage using the pit box that's closest to turn four because you had a greater distance where there was no pit road speed on the exiting part. I am intrigued by this idea of going to the left side tires first. Yeah, and that, they're the closest. Yeah, that, I, but I, I don't know. It didn't say, you know, between Martin and Kane, there were three one hundredths of a second. That was it. That could have been anywhere. Just yeah. wonder, though, how much that has the driver hesitating a little bit because that front tire changer has to get back in front of the car. Wow, Jimmy in the middle of pit road carrying a lot of speed. Yeah, it looked like he was slow off off getting off. And he locked it up and he slid yep. through. Push it back, push it back, when push he, it back. Locked up the rear tires, Matt. Stop. And this past week, Chad Knauss broke up the 48 changers, brought in Cam Waugh and David Mayo from the developmental program. Felt like they needed to make some improvements. But boy, it's going to cost them a lot of time sliding through the box. Mike. Yeah, that's going to be a disaster here. Damage is done. Damage is done. Just nice and smooth. Don't well, turn anything up. I knew he was carrying a lot of speed, about six or seven. Uh, boxes away, but it looked like he could bring the car down to speed and stop. But when the left, when the rear tires locked up, that was it. What I saw was it looked like he came off the track slow. Uh, or I think he realized I had a little speed left, and he tried to make it up coming down pit road. Because actually his trap speed was the slowest of our four drivers that we've seen so far at 150 miles per hour. Yeah, and that's what it appeared You're to right. me. Like he slowed down to and he said, oh, man, I got to make that up. And then he really tried to carry speed early on pit road. One minute, 59.46 seconds. That would have been second fastest last year when we had the pit road speed limit in effect. And there you'll see where Jimmy ranks among four drivers. Locking it up on pit entry has cost Jimmy Johnson. Our fifth driver in sprint all-star qualifying presented by Golden Corral is the man with a hot hand, Matt Kenson in the Home Depot. Husky Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing. Jason Ratcliffe up on the box. Boy, they, they have got these cars, this 20 car and all, all the Gibbs cars. They are eating the racetrack up. That thing is down on the ground, right on that white line, and it is going somewhere, man. Remember, Ratcliffe's suspension reduced by the appeals committee uh, that heard the Penalties to Joe Gibbs Racing for the engine issue a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Matt Kenseth already after 11 races, he has led 781 laps. He only led a total of 480 last year. Started 15th, finished third in this event last year. A little slow on interest speed, though. Yep. Maybe a little gun shy after what happened to Jimmy Johnson. Here's Matt. And the 20 guys jump over the wall, grab some tape off the grill. John Royer and Chris Taylor, the changers, and Jason Tate, the Jackman, comes around the front. A couple pumps, the left side is up. They're indexing the wheels. Waited a little bit on the left rear. 14-7. Boy, and uh, a good bit of wheel spin for Kenseth. Kind of arrested his forward motion, only 86 miles an hour at the end of pit road. Uh, Jimmy Johnson, a one lug nut penalty, one loose lug nut on his pit stop. Five second penalty added on to his time. And then, and they have made some changes on that pit crew. Of course, the, it, it was it was out of whack anyway when he slid through the pit box. That threw their timing off everywhere. Yeah, Matt has just been slow getting on the pit road and slow getting off. The pit stop was about in the range of everyone else's. A minute 55.05 for Kenseth. And there's where he ranks best pit stop. 
of the of the day so far. Steve with Jimmy Johnson and uh, Jimmy just debriefed with his crew that that's so unusual than what you guys normally do. Uh, could you feel that car not being able to stop? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, it started wheel hopping, and that was uh, a big problem trying to get it stopped. The thing that makes me happy though is they were standing there watching it, and I scared them from pit road with my entry speed. So uh, I put a big effort up there, but unfortunately just didn't uh, have the car under control in the braking zone, and the back tire started bouncing. At that point, I knew I wasn't going to stop in my box, and I was just trying to avoid from spinning out. So uh, you know, fun, different. It's not going to help us win that first segment, but um, you know, had some fun in the process. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Hey, guys, we're down here right where they're rolling the cars out on the pit road to start their qualifying run. We watch Tony Stewart right now take to the track. He was down here earlier watching the, some of the early candidates go out. You can see here over my shoulder, you can see that Joey Logano as well as Clint Boyer have found themselves a little bit of advantage points so they can watch other team, other drivers coming off the racetrack as well as watching Jumbo Tron try, try as far as how they're going around the racetrack. These guys are just being kind of blown away how everybody's attacking coming off this racetrack and it's got a lot of these drivers' attention. Pretty interesting from Carl Edwards, Jeff Burton, everybody. It's all going on as we watch Tony Stewart. Tony, Tony was telling me, telling me earlier, he said, man, I don't know what they're going to do. I know what I'm going to do. All right. Here's the boss at Stuart Haas Racing. Steve Addington, the crew chief. Tony turns 42 on Monday. And this is the Bass Pro Shops National Wild Turkey Federation Chevrolet for Stewart, who has 14 all-star appearances. That's every year he has been in the Sprint Cup Series. He's been in the all-star race. 147. Uh, that's that's not anything like what we've seen some of those guys in the 150s. Oh, he come and slow into the box. Yeah, and, and he didn't even start catching gears until he got down on pit road, which I'm surprised. Matt? And you can see they're handing the jack over the roof of the car to try to save even more time. I read Joe Hussey is 13th year. Mixed background of these guys. On the back, a couple graduates from the 5-all, five 5-on five pickford school. All right, Stewart spins the wheels a bit, getting out of his pit box. Uh, Matt Kenseth's team had a lug nut penalty. Five seconds added to their time. Yeah, Tony, 90 miles per hour getting off pit road, and by my stopwatch, his first lap was the slowest of all the drivers that's run so far. Yeah, just uh, he didn't get on pit road real hard. And like I said, he's, I watched you had his in-car camera. So you could see he was all the way down on pit road for and nearing a pit stop before he started catching gears, which uh, I think I would have wanted to come hotter and started downshifting sooner. So Stewart uh, fifth on raw time. And you see three of the or four of the six categories. He ranked fifth. With Clint Boyer looking on, the seventh driver to qualify uh, will be Kyle Busch. Joey Logano having a look at his former teammate on track in the Snickers Bites Toyota for Joe Gibbs Racing and crew chief Dave Rogers. Kyle started on pole last year and led 14 laps before finishing fourth. He's been in seven all-star races. He's made it to the checkered flag in three of the seven. This ought to be right in his wheelhouse. <laughs> yes. You're talking about somebody that might scare us getting on pit road? Well, his brother did. I guarantee and his brother's you. fastest. He will be just as much fun to watch as his brother, Kurt Busch. I promise you. He will bring it road. to the house. Bring it to it this time by. Unofficially, pretty good first lap for yep. Kyle Busch in that 18. This ought to be. <laughs> I'm holding my breath. <laughs> I don't know what to expect. He's going to arc this thing right down in there, man. He's right on the bottom, and he's going to whoop it right to the bottom. Ooh. Tight, tight entry, baby. Wow, I slid that thing onto pit road. He's flying. If he can get it wound up. 15, 10. Perfect. That was perfect, It Matt. was. That was a thing of beauty. And Jeff Fender, great approach off. off the wall. You talk about longevity. Two of the six have been at JGR for more than 12 years. This group has been together starting in the 2008 season. Solid stop. Go, 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 go. And Nick Liddell oh, oh, oh. hits the lugs and he's away, Mike. Yep, a lot of wheel spin. But then Kyle gets out into the asphalt and the car starts accelerating. Daryl, he carried more speed, longer down pit road, and then timed the stop perfectly. I just, when they're coming down here to the pit box, I mean, there ain't no way to get that thing wound up, but they're doing them. 
masterful job. All these guys are. He did go so deep in his box, it's almost like it caught the crew off guard for just a split yeah, second. Yeah, so he a little deep. Mark went a little shallow. That messes up the timing, but uh, At least still. He was in the box. Still, <laughs> I couldn't believe he even swole up in the box. All right, here we go. Checkered flag, P2. It's the Bush brothers on the front row right now. Kurt and Kyle. Waiting for the time to come up. One fifty two point seven five four for Kyle Bush, who currently is second by three tenths of a second. Second on his first lap. Only sixth on the entry speed. That's a bit of a surprise because he just sailed down pit road. And uh, so right in the middle of there, that's where he gained all that time. Yeah, it is because he, he came on the pit road, but he kept he kept the speed up longer, much longer. Now this is Marcus Ambrose in the DeWalt. Stanley Ford for Richard Petty Motorsports and Drew Blickensdurfer. And they had trouble in practice. Car didn't work well, lost an axle, hit the wall, and this is the backup car. In the first laps, he's turning in this backup car because that happened with just about 10 or 12 minutes to go in that one practice session. So this car looks better better than his other car. Yes. I can say that. It looks like he's driving a little bit better for him. Now, he did not get to practice a high-speed pit road entry because they were preparing that backup car to qualify here. Marcus drifts up the hill a little bit, gets a nice angle down on the pit road. Smooth and fast. Oh Locks boy. up the fronts. Oh, boy. Hold oh on. Boy. It's disappointing entry though for Marcos Ambrose. Two of the six are the only returning members from last year, and that's the front changer, Warren Powell and Joe Coronel. Just remember, Mike, he had no time in this car. You don't know what the brakes are like. He really is in an unfamiliar car. Uh, I'm not surprised he had issues getting that thing stopped. And he had about the third or fourth quickest entrance speed. Oh, yeah. You know, Marcus, he's a road racer. He can get that thing down the hill and into the pits. I think it was probably a brake issue more than it was a Marcus issue. Just glad this day is over. He might, go all, <laughs> he might go all the way back to Tasmania if he kept up like this. He'll be down in Austin Sunday. Seventh overall. <laughs> uh, very good pit entry from turn three to the pit entry. Third in that category. But the front wheel lock up here caused him to overshoot his pit by a couple of feet. But you see, Mike, it was all front brake. And there was no rear brake at all. And so I think this, if he had had a chance to try this car, he could have balanced it out and he'd have been fine. Jeff Gordon on track, Steve. With Kyle Busch, Mike, uh, so aggressive getting on pit road. It was fun to watch, but did you leave anything on the table? Yeah, I think so a little bit. Um, coming to pit road, like the middle of three and four to the pit road entry, I felt like I gave up too much right there just to get the car turned. But uh, Overall, I don't know what the times were yet, but um, you know, felt pretty good and felt like I got all I could once I applied brake on pit road to my stall. So that was about, that was pretty good. But um, all in all, you know, Snickers Camry's really, really fast. I think the guys have done a great job for me. So, um, you know, if that stays top four, that'll be fun. We can race them from there. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Jeff Gordon in the Chromax Pro Automotive finishes Chevrolet. Started eighth, finished 13th last year. But he's been in 19 all-star races, started pole in 96, and as we said, won it three times. Let's see how the old pro gets your own pit road here. A uh, lug nut penalty on Marcus Ambrose, five seconds added. Yeah, a little slow on the, off the smooth. race. Nice and smooth. A little slow. 8.1 for the entry area. And a nice smooth stop, Matt. And Walt Smith, the pit crew coach, he first went over the wall back in 1984, so he could try to describe to these guys, a relatively young crew at Hendrick Motorsports, what to expect in this type of situation. 
A little clean of the grill, solid stop. All the way, all the way. Coming to the checker, all the way hard. What I like there, Darrell, was no wheel spin. Yeah, and, uh, Jeff was just slow off the track, pretty slow getting into his pit box. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a nice, solid effort. Yeah, he was 20 miles per hour slower at the trap speed than Kurt Busch that's on the pole right now. Yeah, very, very conservative approach to the whole thing. But that is the quickest pit stop that we've seen yep, so far. Great pit stop. That's going to be a good, uh, good mid-pack effort right here for Jeff Gordon and team. Fifth out of nine, a minute 54.33. Great pit stop, the best so far. Coming up, Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano. I guess that must be our Sunoco camera. He will bring a, a unique uh, report, I'm sure. I'm sure. What a great shot, though, of Clint Boyer there on the left-hand side of the screen. Put him tug on that wheel. Yep, down in there. The five-hour energy Toyota. Brian Patty is the crew chief there at Michael Walter Bracing. Look how down in the seat and just how much vibration there is uh, going through the turns there, and it pushes him down. See, he comes up a little on the straightaway here. And you watch when he goes in and compresses down into turn three here. So he can go down. He got a nice, really rough ride. They got that thing really pulled down with a pretty mean, aggressive shock package. Darren, what I love about this shot, we'll be able to see Clint downshift as he comes on the pit road this next time. Boyer won the Sprint Cup race here last October. Getting ready. Look how rough that thing rides. On the bump stop, aggressive shocks. Pretty low on the racetrack. Brings it down pretty hard. Here he comes. Got to start catching some gears. Whoa, locks up a little bit Whoa. there, Matt. Two new players on this team, Mike, this year, Brandon Hopkins and Richard Coleman, although Coleman is an 11th year veteran in NASCAR going over the wall. He's the carrier. And you can see they did the conventional and unconventional. Now these guys are started on the left, now on the right. All the way, hard on. Fourteen five. You know, I just saw something I liked about that. The Jack man usually has to run all the way around to the right, run all the way around to the left, and back up. Here, when he's done, he pulls the Jack and gets out of the way on the right side. Doesn't have to make that trip all the way back around. It should be. It should be faster. Yep. In theory. And, but, and obviously all the Michael Walter drivers are going with this technique. We saw Mark Martin and the 55s group do the same. A little bit worried about Clint coming in, though. They heard all that clanging and clacking that's going on, and that's wheel hop. That's hard on the gears. Well, that's one reason they don't make this an impound race. These guys will be changing probably axles, drive plates, gears, everything that has to do with that area. Hey, that's a great run. Third for Boyer. Second fastest pit stop. Good stop. And third fastest exit speed. Highlight Clint Boyer's run, third quick. Yeah, he becomes only the third driver to exceed 100 miles per hour, leaving pit road at the trap. The Golden Corral track description of Charlotte Motor Speedway, as it's been since 1960, a mile and a half around, a quad oval. Uh, the first such track in the sport. 24 degree banking was pretty standard for super speedways when this was built. A lot of grandstands have been added. The infield was a big hole. They had it was the borrow pit to build the bankings in the track. Got it all filled in and all at use here. A couple Ford drivers talk things over, Jeff. Well, the thing right now, Mike, I was talking to Kevin Harvick just a minute ago. He must be over to the car and he said, "What should I do, Hammond?" He said, I didn't get a chance to practice coming on the pit road. You got any suggestions? I said, uh-huh. Make sure your brakes are working really good, buddy, because they've been bringing it down here pretty aggressive. He said, well, I guess it's a good day to learn how good I really am at catching gears and using the brakes. So here's the Budweiser Ream Chevrolet for Richard Childress Racing's Kevin Harvick. Gil Martin back atop the pit box for Kevin. Yeah, the reason he didn't get the practice pit road speed is this group lost an engine right at the tail end of practice. In fact, it ended practice a few minutes earlier. Kevin Harvick will have to start this all-star race at the rear because of that engine change. Harvick won the all-star race in 2007 and took home $1,031,000. So, Daryl, do you want to balance your brakes for getting into the corner 
or for getting woed on pit road. Oh, no, getting woed is a big deal. I mean, you got to get this thing woed up, and we've seen us. That's what I saw with Marcus Ambrose locked up the right front, slid it, no rear brake, no help from that at all. Uh, it's pretty, you got to have pretty balance to come down pit road the way these guys are. Boy, Kevin took a high arc, going to run down the hill, and then pass it well, up. A lot of speed in the middle of pit road. And he's going to make it. Oh, he's over, he's Matt. Over. He's oh. over the line. He's going to have to push it back. That's going to cost him at least five seconds. Still not back. No, he's going to be in trouble. They service the car with the car on the line. Yeah, you, you can't do the work until you get him back in the box. So uh, this is a bad day that went even worse. But he's going to start in the back anyway. Right. So, well, let's try. But I think they were hoping for a good maybe oh, find effort to get that pit selection. Yeah. Well, you know, Kevin said he uh, hadn't had any practice. Well, how'd that work out? Not too good. And it looked like he was just slow enough, Daryl, two or three pits away. He was going to be clean and stopped in the box, and then. It did. It, it looked like he was almost too slow there right. for a yeah. point. It did, Larry. What what I'm seeing is guys that come off the track a little bit slow, try to make it up on pit road, yep. and they carry too much speed. I think probably what happens, Mike, is when you start down off the banking down on the pit road, you think you're going as fast as you could possibly. Then you realize you aren't, and, and you try to make it up. So Kevin Harvick will start from the rear after overshooting his pit. With Clint Boyer and uh, DW described your entry onto pit road as a lot of clanging and clacking. A lot of noise there. It was a lot of break dancing going on in the pedals and a lot of things going on. Clanking and clacking would definitely probably be added to that list. That's a wild deal. Um, you don't want to talk about being out of, out of the, the element there. I mean, it's, it's just it's amazing coming on the pit road that fast. Um, the only way we ever go on pit road that fast is to avoid an accident, and it's pretty good chance that you're going to crash coming on pit road like that. So it's, it's interesting. It's exciting. I, I think uh, the whole thing could have been better. Our lap could have been better. I could have been better coming on the pit road. Um, exiting, I think I got uh, you know pretty good off, off of uh, the pit box, but that's a fun fun event right there. It's pretty exciting. Thanks, Clint. Thank you. Nice job by Boyer. He is third behind the Bush brothers. Joey Logano in the Pennzoil Ford for Penske Racing. Steve Reese, the crew chief. Logano's third all-star race fast in the middle of pit road. Oh my Hard God. on the brakes. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. And he's going to make it. Oh. No! Oh. Then got back up, back up. Can't do it. Another car that's gone over the line, Jay Hackney, Ray Gallahan, and Travis Johnson, the front changer, Jackman, and rear changer going to work. Now the pit crew coach is the rear carrier, Trent Cherry. They spent a lot of time working on the chemistry of this group. Still solid stop, even though they lost all that time, Mike, backing up. They made a night, a great recovery. They did. I thought he had it. He was so fast. I mean, I believe that's the fastest. It is the fastest there. Pit road that I've seen. Yeah, by a mile per hour, 158. And he was so close. I thought he was going to get stopped. I did, too. But that's even that little, like. little pushback, still a nice recovery. A little bit right at the end. Yeah, because they were only about a second off on the pit stop. Now, if he'd been in the deeper pit stall toward turn one, he would have been stopped. But he wasn't. And Logano ends up third. Look at that. Even with that, <laughs> even, even having to push. back up. Look at that. Fastest but pit look, look at that speed, 158 miles an hour. And the only one that's off, really, is the pit stop itself. I, I, when he came on pit road, I didn't expect him to get stopped. They did How? a great job. How about that? Greg Biffle for Matt Pusha, the crew chief, and Roush Fenway Racing, the 3M Filtreat Ford. Filtreat are furnace filters and other filters, a 3M brand. Last year, Biffle started fourth, finished 22nd engine failure. He's been in nine all-star races. But Mike, you know what I like? I mean, it's the style. Some of these guys, they ride right around the bottom and come on pit road. Joey Logano arced it way up the middle of the corner and came on pit road. Kevin Harvick slid through his pit and they didn't get him back for enough. Logano slides through his pit, they push him back going about business as usual. Just the recovery and the style, uh, it's all kind of fun to watch. Well, we expect the unexpected on All-Star Weekend and we're certainly getting it tonight. Yes, sir. 
By the way, Kevin Harvick had no official time because they made their pit stop outside the box. His time was disallowed. I think stopwatch, Greg, actually ran a pretty good first lap. I think the most impressive, here comes Greg on pit road. Let's see how he does. He should be pretty quick. Oh, he's carrying the mail. Oh, baby. Bring it down. Can he do it? Can he do it? Just like Kyle Busch, this is going to be perfect. Perfect. Perfect entry. Kevin Novak, the front changer. He goes over Sean Meckelson, the jack man. And then Curtis Thompson. Now, the gas man, Justin Reisman, since they're not fueling, they're using the gas man in different positions as far as helping pull tires. And he's a former park ranger. Now, what I noticed, Greg's pit crew, they, they hesitated they waited, a lot. They waited too long. I, I, I don't know what they were waiting on. And still had a good pit stop. A great stop, I mean, but that timing of getting over the wall might have been off a little bit. And Biffle, again, amazing, blistering speed on pit road. It was a little slow getting off, 96 miles per hour compared to Kurt Bush. Sorry, guys, this is Eric Hines. Awesome job getting up there, road there, buddy. Awesome job getting up there, road. P2, awesome job. Second. Yeah, I, I agree. 152.7. Not spectacular in any one category, but really good in all five. Yes, sir. Nice, smooth run. Carlett's hopping aboard, and look at the name above the door, as we all remember and miss Dick Trickle, the great short tracker and former Sprint Cup driver who passed away yesterday. Steve. With Joey Logano, and Joey, man, that was so close. You were so close to get that thing stopped in your box. I know. Um, there's a lot more grip out there now than there was in practice, and we also practiced on old tires. So, um, I, I did exactly what I did in practice, but there's so much more grip. I wish I did things differently now. But um, overall, the uh, Shell Pennzoil team, they did an awesome job. <laughs> it a, it's a lot of fun. It's the first time I actually got to do the qualifying like this. Last time I had the opportunity, it rained. So um, it's just so much fun to do that and, and come out pit road. Just half a car lane. If I could break that a little bit earlier, it would have been fine. Have some fun tomorrow night. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. David Reagan, winner at Talladega to get into this year's and next year's All-Star Race for Front Row Motorsports in the I Break for Trains, uh, CXX number 34 Ford. And see, there's a, there's a drive. This is fun. This is a different format. It's a different way we did. We never get to do this. This is fun. Wow. Fast at the middle of pit road. I now like hard the... on the brakes. Oh. He's going to make it. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, 153 Wes, miles per hour. Wes Lovejoy, the front changer. He's part of the Hendrick developmental program. He works out with the Hendrick guys, but helps pit this car the 34 on race day. Four of the six are new to this team this year. 16-4, 16-3. A lot of wheel spin coming out for Reagan. Very nice job on the driver's part, though, on pit road. He came <laughs> off the he racetrack. Did, did great coming in. 98 miles an hour at the pit exit, though. Yeah, by my stopwatch, his first lap was a, was a little off from what okay. some of these drivers have been running. But when you consider that this team had no plans to run the All-Star Race or the showdown, until they won Talladega in two weeks. They put it all together. And I made a mistake earlier in practice. I said this is the first time Front Row Motorsports had been in the All-Star Race. They actually ran David Reagan last year because he had won the year before at Daytona for Roush Fenway. Beat some pretty good cars there, too. Tenth. Tenth for David Reagan. Fifth fastest exit speed, fourth fastest entry speed. That's a fast freight right there. Brian Newman getting ready. Carl Edwards going out on track. He'll be the 15th qualifier of the day. Here's Steve. With Greg Biffle and uh, Greg, boy, you crushed that pit stop. You laid it right in there. Did you lose any time anywhere else? You know, the car was just a little bit tight. So uh, down there in three and four coming to the checkered, I couldn't get it on the bottom, and I was up the racetrack a little bit. But uh, I'm just so excited. You know, hair standing up on the back of my neck doing this. Uh, you know, my guys give it 100%. I gave it 100%. And, uh, you know, we came up with a hair short, but I'm, I'm sure having a lot of fun. And these cars are uh, fun to drive when, when we get to do stuff like this. Good luck tomorrow night. Thank you. Greg, only a quarter second off pole. Here's his Roush Fenway teammate, the pass it all forward of Carl Edwards and uh, crew chief Jimmy Fennick. Seven all-star starts for Edwards, who won it 
in 2011. I mean, when's the last time you heard a driver say the hair was standing up on the back? <laughs> right. You know, they always tell them out of breath and, like, you know, all those kind of things. But th this is the all-star race, and this is fun. These guys are really enjoying this. It's something different. All right, here comes Carl. Smooth, straightens it out. It looks like he gasses it a bit Whoa, once baby. that car gets straight. Now, can he get it stopped? A little yes, bit of wheel can. hop, but he gets it stopped. My front carrier, Colin Pazzi, normally works with 13-year vet Justin Notestad, but he tore his Achilles tendon yesterday. They brought in Corey Baldwin from the Roush Six Nationwide team to fill in for Notestad on the front, and he's away. Wow. That's one of the fastest pit stops right there as well. Yep, 13-5 for Edwards. And at the end of pit road, 93 miles an hour. Yeah, that's a little off, but that 154 getting on the pit road, that's right up there with the best stop. <laughs> that's right on right there, brother. And he carried that, too, a long way down pit road. And I had him a pretty good first lap. He may knock his teammate off the front row here. Yeah, this is going to be in the hunt. He's definitely working on beating Greg Biffle in that 16 group. There's only a quarter second between the first two. Did he fit it in there? How about, how about this? How about he beat everybody? P1, good job, Carl. P1. How about he just beats everybody? Uh, over a second. Yeah, that's fun. Fun, fun. Look good at that job, time. Guys. Look at that pit entry. First, fastest yep. pit entry. And only because of wheel spin uh, was the exit speed slow. First or second entry. or third in all categories. Pit stop. That. I mean, that is an amazing. Look at Jimmy Finney. I like old Finney. I, I swear, I do too. he's been around so long and he's so cool. One minute, 51.29 for Carl. I think Carl Edwards is starting to like Jimmy Finney, too. Oh, yeah. Now, if, if Carl will just stay out of the grass this, week, this year, <laughs> we'll, it, I think Jimmy will be happy. Jeff? Yeah, I'm down here looking at the 39 car of Ryan Newman. And, he, guys, he's added a little bit more tape to the front nose this thing, but they've also got it fixed so that when he comes down on that pit stop that the car's running hot, they can pull a little bit of tape. But a lot of these guys look like they're closing down the front openings and starting to cool off. These guys going out later, I think they're going to benefit from the cooler temperatures as far as the engine, but as well as grip on this racetrack. Yeah, Thank Jeff, you. we've seen a lot of these crews pulling tape when they were sitting there changing those four tires. Four cars to go, including the National Guard, Chevrolet of Hendrick Motorsports, and Dale Earnhardt Jr., who was voted into the race in 2011. I would say, based on that one piece of fluorescent tape I'm seeing on the nose of his car, they're probably going to pull tape off of Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pretty good first lap, too. Last year, he won the showdown to transfer into the All-Star race, so started 21st, finished top five. He's been in the All-Star Race 13 times, a winner in 2000. Well, he's way up the track. He's got that Joy Logano look coming keep down coming, the hill. Keep coming, keep coming. All the right, a little bit. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming for now. He gassed it a little once it got straightened out. He did, and I like the way his spotter was talking him into the box. You can see 155. Wow. And a That's good bad. job off the wall. Joe Slingerland, veteran on the back. But Clay Robinson, the front changer, 23rd year in racing. He changed one former college athlete for number for another as a carrier. Kevin Harris, former Wake Forest running back. He's in that position now. Go, Junior. Go, buddy. Great pit stop by that group. Boy, Darrell, looks, like right right looks like it's so hard to modulate wheel spin coming out of the box. Yeah, you got those new tires on there, you know, and it's hard to get any grip when you first drop the hammer on them. And they did pull the tape off the, the nose of his car, the piece of yellow fluorescent tape. That's a bit of a balance change. Biffle was talking about his car was tight on the coming back to the checkered lap. I can do that. But, Daryl, how about how much T.J. Majors, the spotter, was talking to him? Talked him right in there, didn't he? Second front row for Earnhardt. Cool. Fastest pit stop. <laughs> Fourth fastest entry speed. <laughs> Kills me. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Here's what the fastest pit stop of the day so far looks like. Three cars to go. Carl Edwards is fastest so far with three cars to go, Steve. And still trying to catch his breath. I told Carl his entry speed was 154, and you said it felt like 254. That's fast, man. I, I realized coming down the back straight on the second lap, coming to the pit stop, I thought, I'm going to have to breathe because I, I can't hold my breath the entire time. And then when I finally got stopped down here, um, I almost forgot how to do my pit stop. I was, I was so grateful that it did stop. 
did all my prayers and everything, and then uh, we got on with it. But man, just uh, awesome. This is really fun. This I vote. I'm the first vote. I vote we do this at every racetrack, qualify like this. It's so cool. Um, it just it's a lot of fun. That's as good as it gets. All right, good, good job. Thanks. thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Steve. Ryan Newman in the Aspen Dental Chevrolet for Stuart Haas Racing. Matt Borland, the crew chief. 11 all-star starts for Newman. Pole in 2005, winner in 2002. He won the sprint race to transfer in and went on to win it in his rookie year. And one lug nut penalty for Dale Earnhardt Jr. That'll cost him five seconds and move him off of the front row and back to 13th. And Jack Man Wes Herlocker from East Carolina University, DB and receiver. He goes to work on the left side like we saw. They hand the Jack over. Kelly Kellis, a longtime veteran. He's the front changer. And Jonathan Sherman, over 10 years at JGR. What was the time, Mike? 15-2. I'm still not sold no, on, this, on this passing the jack and left side. I'm just, I'm not sold on it. I think to holding you on pit wall until the car stops, that's enough of a change. And then you throw in, okay, we're going to do the left fit, you know, do it backwards, left first, right. I just think that's too much. Well, I know we have two more drivers to go after Ryan Newman, and all I saw out of the 99 car, Carl Edwards, was conventional. Everything conventional. That's it. Old school. Jimmy Fennick. That's right. Old school. I like it. <laughs> Brian Newman clocks in 11. 154.71. And here's a look at Newman with the 10th fastest pit stop of the 17 so far. And here's what we're talking about. You'll see him handing the jack from the left side to the right side. I, I don't know that that buys you anything. I, I, I truly don't. It looks cool. I think it's fun, though. It looks <laughs> like you can do that faster than you can carry it around to the other side of the yeah, car. Surely you could. Especially with tire carriers and changers yeah, in the I, way. I, I mean, it makes sense. I like sense. it. It makes sense. But I like this. Man, I like the way everybody's thinking. Being creative. Thinking yes. outside the box. Something like different. It. Creative. I, I like it a lot. So here's Denny Hamlin in the FedEx Express Toyota for Darian Grubb and Joe Gibbs Racing. Started third, finished 20th last year six all-star appearances for Hamlin but you know when we see these guys do these different things just think about this what if NASCAR didn't have rules to regulate everything like they do oh boy look where we would be that's right Steve thanks Mike with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and uh, he was just asking how far that puts him back is that 13th is 13th. that correct 13th yep. thank you very much Carl Edwards says he votes to do this every week what about you oh well I don't know um I don't believe Carl. <laughs> I don't believe what he says. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a pretty neat deal and and a little twist, a little different twist to it. I I like just having the pit crews involved. I like um, uh, allowing them to help determine the outcome of today and uh, the outcome of qualifying. I think it's really important to get them involved uh, in in what we're doing today and let those guys showcase their talents and. Uh, it's, it was fun, you know. I, I don't think that it's trying to get on pit road like that. Something I want to make a habit out of doing, but it was pretty fun. I'd, I'd, I'd do it next year if I wanted to. Thank you, Dale. Denny Hamlin, you hear that chatter as Whoa. he locks it up and gets to the stop. Here's the crew around to the right side in what looks to be a conventional four-tire stop. Mike, that's what wheel hop sounds like. That's when the rear tires are trying to lock up. And one thing that Denny Hamlin did, he ran right around the bottom of the racetrack coming on the pit road. 14.7 seconds is the stop for Hamlin. Looks like and good his exit. exit. Looks good. 98 miles an hour. Just, just was quite a bit off on coming on the pit road, but he's the only driver I've seen that's hugged that white line coming on there. Yeah, it looked like Logano and Dale Jr. both, they arced it way up in the middle and down. That's the way we used to do it, and that seemed to be the best to me. Hamlin, eighth. One minute, 53.71 seconds for the FedEx Toyota. A workmanlike run. Not quick on the entry, however. Yeah, I think bring it, bringing it around all the way around the bottom of the racetrack there on the pit road, I think that costs a good bit of speed. I would think Brad Keselowski would probably try something 
rather unconventional. No question. No, no telling what, right, Larry? Well, and that's what it took last year. He qualified 19th, but ended up finishing second. Actually won one of the segments. He's been in four NASCAR All-Star races. Started third in 2010. Kevin Buskirk, the interim crew chief. A little fire plow over there. This track's got some speed in it right now, though. The sun's down, it's cooled off. Got some grip. Listen to that engine sing. 201, 202 mile an hour into turn three. And back in the gas, wide open, hard as you can go. Kozlowski trying to make it an all Ford front row right now. It's Carl Edwards and Kurt Busch's Chevrolet. Changing the brake bias, Daryl, to get onto pit road. Yeah, I think that's important. Not making, sure why you wait till making that adjustment. The knob right there on the dash. Not sure why you wait to now to do that, but maybe he felt something. Ooh, 142 coming on the pit. Ooh. Locked up, locked up the rear. Makes it. You saw those rear tires smoking <laughs> from that adjustment, Mike. Wow. Darrell, again, his crew, I think they, they were kind of hesitated because of what went on right I there. I was meant to learn it. I was dancing up here. That had the look of now arriving at uh -oh. 17, 16, 15. Yeah, a little slow on the stop. Yeah, yeah, a couple of seconds off as they pulled some tape as well. Fast through the gears. What's that tag? What's the RPM? Just climb, man. 9,300. Carl Edwards, does he hold the pole? Or does Kozlowski take it away? He's going to have to overcome the length of that pit stop to do it. Kozlowski to the line, and Edwards starts from the pole. Kozlowski is 13th at one minute. 54.98 seconds. It's Carl's first all-star pole in eight attempts. And there is Kozlowski, the entry speed, not that quick, coming on to pit road. We saw him work. We saw him work on the brake bias, put more to the rear. I'm saying you can see the rear tires are locking up. And I'm not sure why he made that change going down the back straightaway. Now the crew could go soon as he stops, but there was definitely that hesitation because I'm not sure they were convinced he was going <laughs> to stop. <laughs> but we saw that with several pit crews. All right, Steve is with our all-star pole sitter. And Carl Edwards just congratulating the guys on the pit crew, and uh, you're going to start up front on a big night with a lot of money on the line. Congratulations. A lot of money. I mean, that's uh, this is unbelievable. This is it's unbelievable because... Um, to me, we've tried so hard. This is such an exciting qualifying format, and there's so much pressure. And to, to get the pole, it's it's uh, it's spectacular. Our car is fast, our pit crew is fast, and um, just awesome. It's thanks to Fast and All Ford, everybody. This this is the way we want to start this weekend. We want to win this thing. We want to win all two million dollars, all the segments, and uh, this is the first part of our plan. And now we're in the way. Yeah, definitely in the way. I hope I'm not in the way when the race starts, but man, this is um, this is cool. I told you when after I got out of the car, I mean, it's such a pressure-packed qualifying lap. There's so many things you have to do right, and um, that's the first time I've put one together and made it all work, and the pit crew was flawless. Hey, I also want to take a moment to uh, say, it, it, nice of you guys to put Dick Trickle's name on, on your door. Well, Greg Emmer uh, is from Wisconsin. A, a lot of the guys on the crew are from Wisconsin, and he, he called me last night and said, hey, man, we, we got to do something. He grew up a mile from, from Dick Trickle, and um, it, it I didn't think, I didn't know if... Uh, if I deserve to have that name above my door. I mean, I'm a huge Dick Trickle fan. The first time I met him was in the garage at Michigan. I was 16 years old. I mean, I was melting down in the sun. And I was like, here's this guy in a black driver's suit, gray hair, smoking a cigarette out in the middle of the sun. And I thought that's the toughest human being alive. So um, we want to just say our thoughts and prayers are with his family and whatever he was struggling with. Um, we just hope he's in a better place now. All right, thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Dick Trickle suffered from severe chronic pain for several years. Carl Edwards, the pole sitter. Here's your Golden Corral starting grid. Carl's crew chief Jimmy Fennig won the All-Star Race in 1998 with Mark Martin. See there on the outside, the Bush brothers nose to tail when we get the green flag. 19 drivers who have locked in. A lot of penalties in this qualifying, except a number of drivers like Earnhardt, Kenseth. 
but the Mike, back of the field. I, I think that all the skeptics that said, oh, this is the worst thing NASCAR's ever done, and this is going to happen, that's going to happen. I think if anybody watched this, they have to admit, this was pretty exciting qualifying session. And that mistake by a couple of drivers and their crews might have cost them a shot at Bruton's big million-dollar bonus to any driver who can win all the segments of tomorrow night's All-Star Race.